Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Equinox Gold stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Equinox Gold is a gold mining company. The company is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada and was founded in 2007. It went public in 2013 and trades on the New York Stock Exchange, TSX, and Deutsche Bursa. The company has seven producing mines, three in Brazil, two in Mexico, and two in the U.S. These mines produced 730,000 ounces of gold last year. These seven mines have 16.1 million ounces of reserves. They have four projects in the pipeline, one in Canada, one in Mexico, one in Brazil, and another in the United States. The U.S. and Mexico projects are just expansions of their current mines. The Santa Luz project in Brazil is expected to be completed in Q1 of next year. It will produce about 100,000 ounces of gold per year with a cost of $877 per ounce. Gold prices are pretty close to $1,800 an ounce. So if it costs them under $900 an ounce to pull the gold, those are really good margins. The Greenstone project in Canada is even better with an all-in cost of $618 an ounce of gold. It plans to extract 350,000 to 400,000 ounces of gold per year. The NPV for this project is expected to be at least $1 billion and possibly more depending on the price of gold. This is one of the best mines in Canada to pull gold. This mine in Canada alone can catapult this company. This chart shows the AISC, which stands for all-in costs to mine an ounce of gold. So you can see in Pilar, it costs $1,640 to mine an ounce of gold. Since gold prices are $1,780 an ounce, it would probably make more sense to wait for prices to get above $2,000 before mining gold here. And it would probably make a lot more sense to focus on the locations where it costs them $1,100 to $1,200 to pull an ounce of gold. So you can see if gold prices fell to $1,000, a lot of gold companies would be in trouble. And the longer the prices stayed low, the more gold miners would be forced into bankruptcy. This chart shows the average AISC, but for 2012 to 2017. Since I cannot find a more recent chart, the average AISC is a lot lower than EQX. So it appears EQX will be in more trouble than the average gold miner. If gold prices crash and stayed low for a long time, companies like EQX may not be able to survive. This is just something to consider when investing in a gold mining stock. Why is it more costly in some places to mine gold than others? Well, the further the mine is away from land and roads, the more expensive, since the miners need to transport the rocks to crushers. Also, the deeper you need to dig beneath the Earth's surface, the more expensive the mining process is because miners use dynamite to blow up the rock. Then they transport pieces of rock in trucks to the crushing stations. Before you can even attempt to extract gold, you need geologists to do prospecting to identify if gold is even at that location, which of course costs money as well. The most gold is actually on the ocean floor, but we have not found a cost-effective way to extract it. We have only found 152,000 metric tons of gold in all of human history. We find 907 million metric tons of iron every year. The cost and difficulty of extracting gold are the main reasons it's so expensive and precious. When compared to other miners, EQX has one of the best price to net asset values. A stock with a low price to net asset value is considered a good value. This company is expected to have the highest production growth of all gold miners and is third in total reserves. So this company may be a hidden gem in the market. Mining companies tend to be scrutinized now more than ever because of the negative impact they cause to the environment. Gold mining has been known to contaminate drinking water, hurt workers, and destroy communities. EQX is committed to ethical and responsible mining. It achieved all 20 safety targets in 2020 it performed over 18,000 COVID tests on its employees. It has made efforts to be more greener by logging in over 500 hours by its senior team to work on these efforts. It has also adopted international ethical standards and principles. 
It also makes an effort to collaborate with other groups and organizations to stay on top of ESG initiatives. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 2 billion market cap. They're trading at $7 a share and they have 299 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have negative free cash flow in 2018 and 19 because they were still growing and they didn't have much revenue at that point. In 2020 they had their first positive free cash flow year and then doubled that in the trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also negative in 18 and 19, positive in 2020 in a trailing 12 months. Their revenue growth is unprecedented. It grew 7x from 2018 to 2019, then tripled to 2020, then grew another 15% to the trailing 12 months. So they're almost at a billion dollars when they were just at 30 million in 2018. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that grew from 8 million to 229 million. Below that is operating expenses. And then below that is operating income. They had negative operating income in 2018. Then it went up to 55 million. Then it more than tripled to 171 million. They paid 41 million of interest on their debt in the trailing 12 months. That's the most interest they paid in a 12 month period. And then they do have negative and other income and expenses. The bottom line of their income statement is their net income, which was positive in 2020 and a trailing 12 months. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. So you can see they went from negative operating cash flow all the way up to 300 million in trailing 12 months. So they're growing that business really impressively. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant and equipment. Their capex is pretty high because the equipment they use to blow up the mines and extract the gold isn't cheap. So they've been spending a lot in capex, over $200 million in the trailing 12 months. But it has paid off because their operating cash flow is higher than their capex. So they do have positive free cash flow in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. So since they had negative free cash flow in 2018 and 19, they issued 87 million of capital stock in 2018, then 40 million in 2020. When a company issues capital stock, that dilutes the current shareholders, making your shares less valuable. They also added debt in 2018, almost 200 million. Then they added 60 million in 2019. In 2020 and the trailing 12 months, they've been paying down debt since they have positive free cash flow and are pretty confident they're going to start paying a dividend next year or the year after. Let's look at their capital structure, 1.5 billion of equity, half a billion of debt. They're 73% equity, 27% debt, and their WAC is 7.6%. The weighted average cost of capital is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt. And that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 4.7 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $4 billion. We divide that by 299 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $14. They're trading at $7. They're trading at a 49% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. So the way I valued this company, I looked at their prior financials. I tried to estimate their future free cash flows based off of their current mines and the projects they have in the pipeline. And I try to be conservative with my estimates. I think there's a good chance they're gonna have more free cash flow than I estimate. And I'm still coming out with a stock price a lot higher than they're trading at. Simply Wall Street is higher than me. They're at $21 a share. So they're saying the stock is 66% undervalued. Eight analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $12. The low was nine, the high was 15. All eight analysts think the stock is undervalued. 
This is the stock price since it started trading on the New York Stock Exchange. So its lowest point was a little under $4 back in the beginning of 2019. Then in August of last year, it peaked at about $13 and it's been coming down since then. This is the stock price the last 52 weeks. It's not really a surprise looking at a gold stock and trying to figure out how the stock price moves. It pretty much moves with the price of gold. The best way a gold miner can beat the price of gold is if their cost of mining gold is cheaper than the average gold miner or if they're really aggressive with growth, finding mines, acquiring other companies, and obviously they need to be successful in those things. But if the price of gold goes up, all the gold mining stocks will go up. Some may go up more than others, but they'll all go up. If the price of gold goes down, all gold mining stocks will go down. Some will go down more than others, but they're all gonna go down. And they have a pretty low beta, as most gold stocks do. Their beta is 0.22. And their stock went down 38%, almost the exact same amount as the S&P 500 went up in the past 52 weeks. Their 52 week low was seven, their high was 14. And the stock is trading well below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About one and a half million to two and a half million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 300 million shares outstanding, 267 million are on float. The 30 million shares not on float are held by insiders of the company or other gold companies. 35% of the shares are held by institutions and 1.3% of the shares are shorted. Analysts appear very bullish on this stock. They're expecting their earnings to grow 29% while the average gold miner decreases 3% and they're expecting their revenue to grow over 16% while the average gold miner is flat. Their average annual earnings decreased 10% in the past five years. But five years ago, they just started making revenue, so it's really hard to look at these numbers. While their industry grew 20%, which is much better than a market of 12%. If you put $10,000 into this company in 2019 when it started trading on the New York Stock Exchange, your investment would have been $19,000 today. That's a 29% average annual return. So this stock is crushing it. The biggest shareholder is Van Eck at 9%, then Ross Beatty at 7.7%. Ross Beatty is a chairman of Equinox board. He's a geologist and has over 40 years of experience in this field. He founded Pan American Silver and currently sits on their board. So he has a ton of experience in this industry. With his leadership, this company can go really far. Then Yamana Gold owns 2.4%, Vanguard, then Donald Smith & Co. There are lots of gold companies that own Equinox stock. They're really confident in this company. They're willing to put their own cash at risk to invest in a competitor. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. The way you calculate earnings per share, it's net income over shares outstanding. There are 32, so investors are paying $32 for $1 of earnings. That's not such a great price to earnings ratio. Value investors like to see below 15 on the PE. But this company is not really focused on building its net income. They're focused on growth. So they're putting a lot of money back into their company to grow it. So that's why their expenses are high and the net income is low. But if you look at the price to sales ratio, it's much better than the market median and average. They're at 2.2. So they're bringing in a lot of revenue relative to their market cap. And they also have a good price to book of 1.4. So they have a really good balance sheet. Their return on invested capital is 8.7%. So every dollar they put into their company, they get an 8.7% return. And their WAC is 7.6%. So that's good, their ROIC is greater than their WAC, and I expect this to improve over time. They can cover their interest payments over four times. They have a pretty low ROE since they have fairly low net income, 4.4%, but I'm pretty confident they can improve this over time as their revenue goes up, and they can cover their current liabilities more than two times with their current assets. Their current assets are 320 million in cash and 196 million of inventory. So they seem to be well capitalized. They had 83 million of free cash flow in a trailing 12 months, and I expect it to be even higher in 2021. They had nearly $400 million of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So they have nearly half a billion dollars of funding. So it doesn't look like they're gonna need to take on any debt to fund their operations. 
Although, if they want to acquire another business or more mines, they may need to take on some debt. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 14 companies in the same industry as Equinox. And if Equinox has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE, but not much worse. They're doing really well in price to sales relative to the average. And they have a good price to book. They're about average in current ratio. The average ROE is negative, they're positive. They're a little worse than average in debt. And they're still a pretty small company, 2 billion market cap. The average is almost 12 billion. Most companies in this industry pay a dividend. They don't yet, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna start paying one next year. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 49% discount. This company seems to be doing all the right things. They're growing their revenue phenomenally. They're building up their portfolio of mines. And the two big projects they're working on, the expenses to extract the gold are pretty low, much lower than their current mines. So if this company gets a little bigger, they could start acquiring other miners. So I'm really bullish on this stock. I think they have a great future. My main concern is if the price of gold decreases a lot, this company could be in trouble because it costs them more money than the average gold miner to extract gold. Although they have a great price to net asset value because their stock price is still low. But when more people find out about this company, I'm pretty sure they're going to drive the price higher. I rank their free cash flow 7 out of 10, their revenue 9 out of 10, and their ratio 7 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.